This is a plaque that is very proudly displayed here on this podium of the speaker. And as you can see, it says John F. Kennedy spoke from this rostrum to the Massachusetts General Court on January 9th of 1961. This was just after he was elected president, but just before he was sworn into office. So it was a very sort of high time for, uh, for President Kennedy uh, to come to Massachusetts and give his more or less a farewell speech as he went to Washington to take over uh, the presidency. And he says in his speech that I carry with me from this state to that high and lonely office to which I now succeed more than fond memories of firm friendships. The enduring qualities of Massachusetts will not be and could not be forgotten in this nation's executive mansion. Courage, integrity, judgment, dedication, these are the historic qualities of the Bay Colony in the Bay State, the qualities which this state has consistently sent to this chamber on Beacon Hill, here in Boston, and to the Capitol Hill and back in Washington. And these are the qualities which, with God's help, this son of Massachusetts hopes will characterize our government's conduct in the four stormy years that lie ahead. John F. Kennedy, 35th President of the United States. Now, one of, the, one of the more fascinating days we had up here on Beacon Hill was we actually were debating a bill that had to do with whether or not a governor could appoint a successor U.S. senator. Under the existing law, the governor would be able to appoint if a U.S. senator vacancy opened up because of a death, or in this case, John Kerry was running for president, we would be able to have the governor appoint someone interim until we had an election. And because this legislature, in my mind, was overwhelmingly Democratic, they didn't want the then Governor Romney to appoint a Republican to the seat. So they stripped away, or filed a bill to strip away that power. And I found it interesting that I was actually speaking myself, if I have a claim to fame in this building of a, uh, perhaps a, uh, you know, a trivia question someday, it was who was the representative who was interrupted when Ted Kennedy spoke for the first and only time in this chamber? And it was when I was giving my speech against this bill, because I thought it was purely partisan, political, uh, and, part and partisan in the sense that this bill was wrong. You don't change the Constitution. You don't change the ability to vote for, for a governor's authority simply because you can. It should be good government. And I didn't think this made sense to leave the people of Massachusetts without representation. But interestingly, I'm giving my speech, and I'm interrupted by the speaker, which is highly, highly unusual. I hate to interrupt you, Representative, but we have Ted Kennedy who would like to address the chamber. And he came in here, and I made the joke later that he must have come in to stop my momentum because I was speaking on a Senate replacement bill. He actually came in because him and Governor Romney and the legislative leaders, the Speaker and the Senate President, had just signed the Health Care Reform Bill in Massachusetts, and he wanted to come and talk to us about it. But what was fascinating was he talked about being with his brother as he came to deliver the speech in 1961, and it was really an amazing moment to see someone like Ted Kennedy be here with all that history he has in his life, and to think that practically 50 years ago, he stood with his brother in this chamber when he delivered that speech. And he talked about being with his dad and his brother across the street in the hotel and how they talked about what he would talk to the people of Massachusetts before he went to Washington. And I found that was incredible. And he also, as I mentioned when I took the podium back after saying that I couldn't believe they flew Ted Kennedy in to debate me on this, was that I also mentioned that he is slated to open up, to throw out the first ball in Fenway Park in 2012 because that's the 100th anniversary of Fenway Park. And fascinatingly, his grandfather threw out the first ball in 1912 when Fenway Park opened. And you talk about a history, that wasn't a great-grandfather or a great-great-grandfather. Ted's own grandfather, John Fitzgerald, I believe it was, uh, or Fitzgerald, um, but he was the mayor of Boston at the time, and he threw out the first ball in 1912. So what an amazing amount of history, and it was just a fun moment we had here in the State House last year when that happened. To me, what we're looking at here, these are right outside the House chambers. These are the most important plaques, if not in Massachusetts, at least in this building. And it really touches on something that I'm very, very focused on in my time as a legislator and something that I've really come to my attention. These are the plaques that represent those who have received the Congressional Medal of Honor. And just to mention this briefly to you, Congressional Medal of Honor is the highest honor given, and it's been now refined to be only for military heroism but you have to perform the highest, highest level of heroism to receive what is given by the President of the United States. Some know it as the Congressional Medal of Honor or the Medal of Honor. There have been about 3,000 recipients in the history of this country. Almost all of them have been killed in action. The type of courage it takes to get recognized with the Medal of Honor is so beyond the realm of the, you know, the usual course of heroism that it's unthinkable. 
but we have plaques outside the chambers that, de that designate all those from Massachusetts who have been awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. And I'm sorry to say, but today, Medal of Honor winners either are not known or that the public has lost interest. They consider heroes to be baseball players and basketball players and celebrities. But the real heroes, these are war heroes that have been unthinkable acts of heroism. And the plaques we have outside the State House, these are the World War I Medal of Honor winners from 1917 to 1919. As you can see, there were only four such people to be recognized in Massachusetts. And over here, we have the plaques from World War II and Korea. And it's important to, to note for me personally that my aide Jason and I, Thomas Hudner is here right now listed on this plaque. He is the only surviving Medal of Honor winner in Massachusetts today. And he lives in Concord and he was kind enough to spend a couple of hours with me a few months ago talking about just life and his experiences. And one of the things he mentioned was he received the Medal of Honor from Harry Truman. And he received it for, for an act where he flew his plane into the mountains of Korea to save one of his comrades. Um, because he was in a situation where his life was in, in jeopardy and he did not ask for permission, he would not have been granted permission, but he flew his plane into those mountains and did his best to save his comrade. For that, Harry Truman gave him the medal. And interestingly, he told us that Harry Truman gave him the medal the day after Douglas MacArthur was relieved of office. Uh, so you can imagine that the uh, president was not very popular that day and he said he had, the, uh, he had to go to the Rose Garden and receive his Medal of Honor that day and he said it was quite an extraordinary day but what an American history uh, Colonel uh, Captain Tom Hudner is from Concord and if you go over here again from the Vietnam conflict we have the Medal of Honor winners and the only today who's alive today again most of these were killed in action jumping on a hand grenade saving uh, your troops but Thomas Kelly Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Naval, received his Medal of Honor in Korea in, in the Vietnam conflict when he drove his boat in between a disabled American boat that was taking fire from the Viet Cong off the shore, and he drove his boat right into the middle, saved that boat, and in the meantime was almost mortally wounded, received a terrible uh, wound to his head and to his eye, and for that he was given the Medal of Honor by President Nixon. Again, those are the only two living Medal of Honor winners alive in Massachusetts, and I will tell you, if you get a chance to meet them, you've met a real American hero. And I will never forget the time I've had with those two men. Um, and I just did not want to not point those out as we pass through into the members' lounge.